Kanji. She's described as the Steve Jobs of classical music, and her dynamic results-driven approach has helped change every organization she's worked with. A podcast host and influential speaker, new author, she's changing the way the world views the arts. Here with us today to talk about her approach and her new book, Run It Like a Business, Aubrey Bergauer. Welcome to Live at Nine. Good to be here. Yes. Thank you. Uh, the book. So, you know, it's hard to fuse art and, and a business mind. So let's talk about what do you mean to run it like a business and you're talking about art? I think you're right. So many times we think art and business do not mix. And yet there are so many challenges in arts and culture, declining audiences. How do we get our audiences back post pandemic? And I realized there are solutions to these problems that have already been vetted, tested, authenticated by the business world. So how do we optimize the business around the art we produce is the theme of the book. Love this. And so what went into writing the book? A lot of research, a lot of data gathering, and I would say through that what really came out are 10 different strategies that each chapter is a different one of these strategies that are borrowed from the business world, but really written about how do we apply that to our work in arts and culture. Things like how do we use digital content to drive attendance to the in-person events? What's happening with subscription models? It's thriving everywhere, but in the arts, it's on the decline. Turns out we're doing some things differently, and we can learn from what these thriving subscription brands, Netflix, Amazon, everybody else are doing, that sort of thing. And what do you mean change the narrative for the arts? I think the current narrative is a lot of challenge. This is an industry that is very labor intensive. We rely on audience members. We rely on philanthropic gifts. And that model is being really challenged right now. And so to change that narrative is to say, no way, the product itself is so strong. Arts and culture and every type of arts organization, whether a museum, an orchestra, opera, ballet, jazz company, I mean, you name it, the product is so strong. That's really what came through as I was researching this. The, the artistic talent is so high. And so to optimize the business around that really is what I believe now through the data and research is the path forward to a thriving future. And that's a different narrative that I want any of us to hear any day. How did the arts become a passion for you? And is there a specific art that is important to you? Classical music is my background. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was like a typical orchestra kid growing up, played an instrument, loved my youth orchestra. And it was in high school that I realized, oh, there's a job managing this. That's the job I want someday. So the rest is history. That's fascinating. Yes, you know what? It's it's like even like this job, if people knew how many people were around this this on air position, yeah. this without the team, I'm literally nothing. You know, and, and you need all of the uh, spokes in the wheel working. Okay, talk to me about how this model you say can be applied to other industries. Yeah, it, well, what you just said is like the perfect example, an excellent analogy of it takes, oh, I say this all the time, it takes all of us on stage and off to do the work we do to produce the art that we produce. And so more and more I hear from other types of industries, whether it's sports and other entertainment organizations, even sometimes journalism, media outlets, just kind of like what you said, they say, yeah, this is th these strategies in some ways are very similar. How do we build loyalty among our patrons, among our fans, among our consumers? How do we uh, keep ourselves relevant in a world that's really rapidly changing around us? All of those concepts are pretty consistent if you have a direct-to-consumer <laughs> business. Right. And you know, you, you kind of gave us a really good tip about uh, using social media um, to drive the arts. Uh, and you're gonna be speaking here. So you're, that's yeah. how we got you. Yeah, this afternoon, 3.30 p.m. at the University of Memphis at the School of Music, free talk open to the public. And they're giving away free books too, I have to plug that, so that's oh. today. Okay, how do people follow you? And I mean, you're a podcaster as well, so uh, what goes into your podcast? The podcast is talking about a lot of these kind of strategies in here. So anybody who does like the business side, what's happening aside from the art offstage, like we've been chatting about, all of that is in the podcast, but at Aubrey Bergauer online, aubreybergauer.com, and of course the book, aubreybergauer.com slash book, or anywhere you buy books. <laughs> Thank you so much for stopping by. I know it's an important day for you, so we really appreciate it. And have a great uh, speech. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. All right.